it's me. So I'm back. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I I had the intention of doing more of these, um, you know, and then. I just ended up doing, you know, two weeks anyway, so who knows. As I said, I've decided I'm going to do a little more of these because I'm bored. And uh, it might be fun to do. Um, but, um, you know, I could put out four of these a week. You could go a month without getting one. So, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Um, so, just keep watching. I'll post when I got one. So I got a big announcement today. I've been kind of sitting on this for god over a year now. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself first. Um, hmm. First off, those who know me know my father directed porn for 30 years. So, I kind of grew up with the porn industry. It's not this big thing that everyone else makes it to be, but it was kind of just, you know, it's what my daddy did, you know? So, uh, it was never a big deal. I was never, I didn't watch it. And it was like, you know, these are the girls my dad would bring home. It's like, you know, oh, this is, you know, my new wife or something. And, you know, you know <clears throat> it was something I grew up with. It was something that was normal to me. And, uh, in fact, two of my stepmoms, are in the Adult Video News uh, Hall of Fame for, like, Lifetime Achievement. Uh, Patty Rhodes and, uh, you know, Tiffany Clark, um, two of my ex-stepmoms. And my dad is also in there for, uh, for his Lifetime Achievement. So, you know, unlike other people, porn was never a big deal to me. I, as I said, I don't watch it. It doesn't really do anything for me. So, in order for me to actually... Um, you know, get together and co-write the autobiography of a porn star, it'd have to be a really interesting porn star. You know, I don't really give a shit about most, you know, people who, you know, fuck on camera. I fucked on camera, I don't give a shit, you know? Um, that's not a big deal to me. Um, in fact, most of the times, you know, when I was growing, you know, not even growing up, when I was in my 20s, too, you know, when I would masturbate, I would think about things I had already done. You know, I didn't, you know, think, oh, wow, there's this unattainable woman who I'll never get. You know, why would I think that? So, um, that said, I am co-writing the autobiography of a very, from the 90s, a very famous porn star. Um, and I know she's famous because if you don't know her name, you know what she did. And myself, I didn't know her from porn. In fact, I didn't actually, I had never seen any of her porn until she sent me some as research. Um, but... Wow, the Castle Crashers music is very distracting right now. Hold on. There we go. Alright, I'm turning off the blonde because that vaguely sounds like porn music and I don't really want... Oh, Freebird. All right, everyone, get your lighters out while I speak. Oh, this is going to be awesome. So, anyway, as I was saying, the way I grew up, you know, porn was never a big deal to me. So, um, I am do I am the uh, co-writer of uh, the autobiography of a particularly famous porn star from the 90s. And as I said, I know she's famous because I, I had never seen her porn and I knew who she was. And I knew where she was mostly from the Howard Stern show and her appearances there. Um, so, you know, as soon as uh, it was, uh, as soon as I got the call and asked if I would be interested in, in you know, writing uh, a book for a friend of my dad's, I was kind of like, well, you know, okay, who is it? And he said her name. And I was like, oh shit, yeah, I'll do it. Because as I said, I, I knew her from the Stern show. And, uh, you know, she turned out to be a pretty cool person. That's kind of the thing that I, uh, you know, that I remember about the Stern Show appearances. Um, but as I said, if you don't know her name, you know what she did. And, uh, wow, it's like I'm Gallagher with her having props over here or whatever. But, um, you know, the other day I was saying that I had to tell people about this and it, I felt like, wow, I've had like 500 things um, to tell people. 
<laughs> you know. And I realized I don't have 500 things. I have 620. That's right, I am co-writing the autobiography of the porn star known as Houston, star of the Houston 620, where she set the record for the gang, the biggest gangbang um, ever recorded. Um, you know, some people have done it afterwards, but no one gives a shit about any of them. You know, those are people just, you know, no one made it an event. It was just, you know, but she did. And she also, um, not only did she do the Houston 620, but she also, um, and this is the thing that I remember her from, is when one of Howard Stern's listeners wanted to take her to the prom. And she said yes, and she went to the prom with this kid. And I always thought that was so cool that, you know, someone would do something like that. So, to me, I think it's actually very cool that I get to work with someone like Houston. Um, she, um, you know, she's had a very interesting life. And, you know, me, I'm, I'm a narcissist, you know, unless you've had an interesting life, I don't give a shit. So, you know, in order for me to actually be interested enough to actually, you know, want to tell her story, um, you know, there's some interesting stuff in there. There's, uh, stuff about the, of course, there's stuff about the Houston 620, there's stuff about her, um, you know, her time that she spent in prison, um, which she actually had the Stern show, uh, go with her to the gates of the prison. Um, there's, uh, you know, there's stuff about, um, after she, uh, there's stuff about, um, you know, uh, by the way, I, I have to say, one of the things that really shocked me is I didn't, I never would have imagined Michael Bay had a big dick, but apparently he does. You know, you see all those explosions and you think he's compensating for something, but who knows, you know? But yeah, so I mean, you get to hear about all sorts of things that she's done in her life, and it's not just about the porn, you know? I mean, she hasn't done porn for about 10 years. 15 years or so, and, uh, there's a lot of stuff in there about her life afterwards. Um, you know, she, uh, she was, um, diagnosed with, uh, carcinogenic melanoma at one point, stage three, which is pretty much, you know, when it's in your lymph nodes, it means you're fucked, and she managed to survive that. And, uh, you know, there's also, um, there's a lot of things in there that, you know, I think it'd be very cool for people to read. And uh, you also get to learn, because I'm co-writing it, you also get to learn little bits of, uh, you know, little things that... Little fun facts that might be pertinent to the stories that uh, I'm telling about her. You know, like, for example, you get to, um, you get to know about the Roman Empress who actually inspired the uh, original gangbang, which was done by Annabelle Chong. Um, but, um, hold on, there we go. Oh, dear. There we go. That's something cheery. Um, but yeah. You know, um, Annabelle Chong did the original Gang Bang, um, and then, uh, Jasmine St. Clair did it, and then Houston made it the big event, and, you know, 620 guys, man. Yeah, you know, 620 people, not just guys, you know, but, um, in one day. Um, so yeah, um, I'm pretty excited to be working with her. Um, it's about, you know, this, uh, we get to, um, these are uh, things she sent me for research. Um, you know, um, like I said, you get to hear about all sorts of things. You get to hear about her um, her recovery. Um, you know, after her uh, after her cancer, you get to hear about her plastic the many many plastic surgery. A lot of them plastic surgery disasters that she had to deal with over the years. Um, you know, as I said, it's a uh, it's a pretty interesting story, and I'm really happy to be able to. To finally tell people that's who I'm working with, you know? Um, so, yeah. Uh, coming this winter. Um, pretty enough. Uh, the story, you know, of uh, Houston from Kim Halsey, which is her real name, and uh, Charles Lupula. So, yeah. Look for that and buy the fucking thing, you know? And, and it'll be out It'll be out everywhere, man. It'll be out in Amazon. It won't be at Walmart, because Walmart doesn't deal with porn, but... It'll be in, uh, you know, it'll be on Amazon, you'll be able to get it on your Kindle, you'll be able to, you know, to order it. Um, she's also opening up, um, in a little bit, uh, and I will update you, um, soon on this. She's opening up a, uh, a pre-order thing where you can get signed, uh, paperback copies, not paperback, uh, hard, hard, uh, cover, uh, copies of it from her. Um, yeah, it's, uh, 
you know, we're going to be uh, hyping this thing up, and I'm, I'm pretty excited to be part of something this, you know, that's going to be pretty big. Um, and as I said, you know, you should buy it, because it's, you know, it's her story, but it's me telling her story. So, you know, if you, if you know my work, you know that I have a particular style that will come out in certain parts, but at the same time, I'm trying to... I definitely tried to keep her voice in there, you know, because it's, it's her story, it's not mine. Um, but yeah, that's who I'm working with, Houston. So yeah, um, other news, uh, Hurricane Katrina, not Katrina, whatever, <laughs> Jeez. Hurricane Irene, see, that's what I keep, you know, trying to think of the bigger hurricane. But uh, yeah, Hurricane Irene came by and I was very bored. Um, the power didn't even go out, but it was, um, you know, I stayed here to, uh, take care of, uh, Lorne, uh, the, the resident, uh, rabbit. Um, and, uh, I worked on Drum Machine for, um, Nemesis Imperium is recording demos this Friday. Uh, four of them. And, uh, so not only do I have the book with, uh, Houston coming out soon, this week... Actually, we'll tell next week. But next week, you will get to hear stuff from my new band. Finally, finally, I'll actually open things up, you know. And also, also, and I think this is kind of cool, so people should know this. Um, uh, most Dark Eden um, is, you know, uh, my friend Jess is actually putting um, a bunch of Dark Eden songs onto YouTube. So, if you ever, you know, needed to uh, hear them, or, in fact, also, uh, there will be a bunch of uh, Apocrypha stuff, which is what I've been calling it, because I'm fucking pretentious, you know, which will be um, remixes and demos and stuff that we never got a chance to release. So, um, you know, I, I hope that, uh, you know, you'll be able to... Uh, to, to gorge yourself on the various Charles-related media that are, I'm going to be blitzkrieging the world with. Um, but, yes. Um, that's pretty much, you know, geez, it's uh, almost 13 minutes, so I don't really have that much time to uh, tell you anything else, except that, uh, as I said, Hurricane Irene. You know, by the way, this is just to further reference people. Um... The whole taping your windows thing is a myth, and it doesn't actually fix anything. So don't tape your windows. What you should do is board wood or some shit up there. Um, that, and also very quickly, I want to give a plug to, um, and as I said, I feel like Gallagher because I have so many fucking props. I want to give a plug to uh, No More Heroes, uh, Heroes Paradise for PS3. Um, probably one of the few games on the Wii actually worth getting. Um, you're pretty much, uh, and you can use the uh, PlayStation Move, the big dildo-looking thing here. But um, what I love is the fact that um, if you want to charge up your sword, you literally have to fucking pretend to jerk off with it. And that is right there. That's endless hours of enjoyment. Um, you don't have to play with a move. You can do it with DualShock, but, you know, the move is a little bit more fun. It's basically about a, a guy who's a complete fucking jerk named Travis who um, buys himself a, uh, a light, you know, called the beam saber, but it's a lightsaber. I mean, a beam katana, but it's a lightsaber. You know, um, he buys that on uh, eBay or some shit and then decides to become an assassin. And you have to kill the various, um, you know, assassins ahead of you um, in the top list. So it's, uh, it's actually pretty fun. It's from Suda51, who is absolutely insane. In fact, uh, Klebold Harris, upon seeing some of the games, said this looks like the type of game I would make when I was drunk. So, read that as you will. But yeah, it's uh, it's available actually for cheap for $39.99 at uh, um, GameStop and uh, Best Buy and all those places or whatever. So, pick it up. It's cheap and it's good. So, yeah. And after you pick that up, keep in mind, this winter, Houston, pretty enough. Kim Halsey, Charles Lupula. All right, so um, if I don't do another video next week or even later in this week, you'll still get to hear new Nemesis Imperium. Well, you'll get to hear Nemesis Imperium stuff. You've never heard anything at all, so everything you hear will be new. All right, so that is it for this week. 
and uh, keep your hand in the gutter and your fist in your pants.